The next Surgeon General, Casey Means, still doesn't know how to read scientific research. Fructose is one of the only types of calories where instead of making you feel satiated, it makes you more hungry. And this is evolutionarily, and we knew this. In the fall, when animals are preparing for hibernation... Oh, of course, animals. Because we, as humans, hibernate like bears do. But I digress. Start eating fructose-rich berries. They need to put on a oh, ton yeah, of fat in the winter. Berries. And so there's a feed-forward mechanism with fructose where it actually gets the bears to be hungry and even violent to outcompete other animals to get as many berries as possible. Fructose rage! Oh! In a short period of time to lay 3D print fat for winter. So you have the scientists understanding this and say, hey, we can make liquid fructose a thousand times more potent than the fructose you'd find in berries. Same molecule, but in higher concentration. How is it a thousand times more potent? Like, what are you basing this on? You realize that the fructose in berries, biochemically, is identical to the fructose in high fructose corn syrup. So please explain to me how it's a thousand times more powerful. And, and we can add it to everything. We can add it to salad dressing. We're going to add it to ketchup. We're going to add it to children's school lunches. We're going to add it, obviously, to sodas. And we're going to make people insatiable. We're going to make their bodies and their brains think that they're preparing for winter that's never coming. And th there has been research that shows that high fructose corn syrup is associated with violence, ADHD, and kids, all of these different things. Winter is coming. And it is the winter of Casey Means discontent. If we actually look at the real scientific research, the difference in satiety between fructose, high fructose corn syrup, sucrose, and glucose is basically negligible. There's really no difference. There's a few studies that are more mechanistic in nature that suggest that maybe fructose is less satiating than glucose, but the studies looking at energy intake, there's more direct studies on the topic, really show very little difference between these sugars and their effect on satiety. Do I think that high fructose corn syrup is a good idea for getting satiated? No, I do not. I don't think sugar in general is a good idea for feeling satiated. Also, Casey, you realize what people are going to take from this is don't eat berries, they make you fat. I wonder if berries make you fat. Survey says, hell no, berries do not make you fat. And here are the receipts. Fruits, such as berries, are associated with a lower risk of obesity and better body composition, not worse body composition. And I'm not even going to touch on the idea that this, the fructose rage, the only thing that's making me rage is the bull coming out of her mouth. She, quite frankly, doesn't care about the scientific research. Either she doesn't read it or she reads it and just disregards it and makes stuff up. It is very very, very disappointing that someone who has been nominated for basically one of the highest scientific offices in the world is this scientifically illiterate, ignorant, pick whatever phrase you want to describe it. It is ridiculous. And it bears pointing out that when you exchange fructose high fructose corn syrup, sucrose in a one-to-one -one ratio for other carbohydrates, there is no difference on fat loss, fat gain, body composition. There's no difference. It is a calorie effect. Are sodas contributing to the obesity crisis? Absolutely. Does high fructose corn syrup and sugar contribute? Yes, because it is energy dense and not as satiating as other sources of calories. But it is not uniquely fattening as she wants to suggest. And this whole feed forward mechanism, again, you're basically equating berries with soda. Get out of here. Are you out of your mind? A answer is yes, because I am convinced that we are actually living in a simulation because this is supposed to be the person who has been nominated for one of the highest scientific offices in the nation. And they don't read research. Or if they do, they don't care about what it says. They only care about confirming what they already believe to be true. And as a scientist, you should not have beliefs. You should have hypotheses supported by data. Because data is more important than your punk feelings. I'm out.